Hello and welcome to the fourth video in this beginner series looking at HTML, JavaScript and CSS, making Space Invaders. This video then we're going to actually put our spaceship on the screen. I'm in Visual Studio Code here. Uh, I've made a, a new folder called Assets and I've put inside the assets a file which you can get from GitHub called playership one underscore blue dot png and I'll just give it a click and that's our little ship here and I want our ship appearing on the screen. For this video we're just going to hard code it in place so we've got it on the screen in the following videos we'll change that and have it moving around. For now let's just uh, get it on the screen and set some of the constants and things that we'll need for later in the application. So I'm going to go into uh, index.html and I'm going to add a new div and I'm going to call this uh, div the, uh, or give this div the class sprite and then go into styles.css and add some styling on for our sprite. Now the first bit of the styling that we have here then is the background image which will be our player ship one underscore blue. We must specify how wide and high we want this div to be so that we can see our image and if it's wider or higher than our actual image then what will happen is is the browser will actually repeat the image unless you make and put an option in here not to do that you can also shrink and grow the image however I know in advance how big the, the image is it's 49 wide by uh, sorry yeah 49 wide by 37 pixels high I'm going to put it in uh, the top 400 and in the middle of the screen at 360 pixels so you remember that we're 720 across absolute positioning so it's positioned exactly by the pixel and then a Z index of 10 so it's above most of the things but behind the um, text that we've got for our scores and just having this uh, information here should be enough to put our sprite onto the screen one thing I do need to do though is go back into the browser because I just had a sneaky feeling I've put it in the wrong place and it should actually be inside our play area. So I'll go back to the browser and refresh and you can see that we've now got our sprite in the middle of the page. What you will see is it's slightly offset and that's because the zero by zero of our sprite is not actually in the middle of the sprite. It's actually, if you can see here, where the red dot is here. And later on in the application, we're going to shift this red dot to the middle of the sprite. And this is often record to, referred to in game programming as the sprite's anchor point. So when you specify the position, where actually you're referring to. And at the moment, we've said y is 400 and x is 360. And that applies to the top left point of the sprite, which is why in the browser we see a slight sort of offset to the right-hand side of the sprite. And we'll deal with that later on. To be able to deal with that one of the things I want to be able to do when the application first loads is I want to be able to load all of the images and analyze those images for what size they are. The reason for this is because a lot of the images and sprites won't be drawn and they won't be hard coded into divs at all like we've just done with our sprite and um, I'll be doing that from the code or will be doing that from the code. So I need to know in advance how big these images are. There are various ways of doing this and the way we're going to do it is it's the easiest I found for a beginner series. So the first thing I'm going to do inside devs.js then is I'm going to create a constant list and this list is going to be called image files and in my list which is designated by the square brackets I'm going to put the name of uh, my player ship. Later on we'll include the enemy files and all sorts of things like that but for now we've just got the player ship. In the game settings I'm going to add in some more properties as well so that I can use them throughout the code. So a comma below the key press object and I'm just going to make some space. I'm going to add in a play area width, a play area height which we know and also the name with the ID of the div of the play area so it's easy for us to select we'll be adding things a lot to the play area in the code it's better to be able to use something here constant rather than hard coding the play area div name in. The other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to add in the name of the players div and I'd like to add in the name of the start position also of the player so here I've got the player div name it's going to be called player sprite and we won't use in this video, we'll use it in later videos. And here I've got an object under this key which has an X and a Y, which is the actual start position. So I'm trying not to use any hard-coded values in 
the main code, I'll have it all nicely packed here in a game settings object. So if I ever need to change anything, I only need to change it here and not look for it in all the rest of the, the code. The other bit of preparation that I would like to do is I'd like to make a game manager. Now this won't be a constant because this is going to contain lots of variables, things that will change during our application running. So I'm going to call this game manager and this will also be equal to an object except now I'm using let. It's a variable, it's called game manager and it means the values inside here can be changed by the code. So I'm going to add an object called assets and I'm also going to add something called player which for now can be undefined it's not defined yet and we'll be defining that in later videos this will hold our player object which will represent uh, our spaceship on the screen what I want to do now though is I want to fill this assets object and remember objects have keys and then a value so like here there are lots of keys here the keys in our assets um, under in the assets object here will actually be the files and we'll store inside here then information relevant to those files so I'm going to jump into main.js and now I'm going to write a couple of functions. So I'm going to write initialization function and for now I just want to log to the console the main game initialization in here so when this function is called I get this logged. More importantly I want a function to be able to process our assets. And this function process asset will take a parameter called an index number. So here we have a list, we've only got one item in our list, player ship blue, called image files. As I go through this list, uh, each item in the list will have a different index number, and the first index number is zero. So in image files index zero, I have player ship one blue. And when we add more images later on, there'll be index one, index two, etc. What I want to do is call this process asset function for every index number inside my list, which is just the index zero at the moment. And when I do that, what I want to do is I want to create a new image and I want to construct the file name from this image. So I'm making a new image object. Uh, the file name will be our assets forward slash image files the index num. So that will be the value in our list. It will be index zero at the start. So it will be player ship blue. So assets forward slash player ship blue plus dot png. And you can see that we've got this player ship one underscore blue dot png in assets. So the name of our file is then that file name. I can then give our image a source and say that it's uh, the file name. And now the image will start loading our uh, file and this doesn't happen instantly so what we're going to do is we're going to assign a function to the onload event of the image which is called then this code here is executed when the image has been loaded and when the image has been loaded we're going to create an, an object in our game manager and we're going to store under the key name of the file we're going to store some information so remember that our game manager.assets is an object here and I need to define a key and I want the key to be our image files at our index so in our case at the start playership one underscore blue so I'm going to take our in, Im, image files with our index number and that will be the key and in here I'm going to store an object and this particular object is going to have the width the height of the image this in this case refers to whatever is calling this function which is this image and then have a file name being that file name. Once my object has been created here, I'm going to increment my index number because I want to go to the next index. And now the image has been loaded. I've created my new object. I can now move on to looking at my next object in the list if there is one. So I'm going to say if my index number is less than the length of my image files list and we've only got one at the moment then process asset for the next index number. So when we first call this it'll be zero. We'll have loaded our image, saved the details. Now it'll be one and we'll ask is index number still less than the length of our list? Well at the start now our list length is one so the answer would be no. But when we have something else in and we've got two or more items, then yes, we would now call the same function again with the index num1 and so on. And we would walk through the entire list of images. As it is, we're done. 
So we can say else because we're done, because index num is no longer less than the length of image files. Then we'll log to the console, we're done. We'll log our assets so we can have a look. And then we'll call the init where we can get on with the rest of the game. So later on, when we've written a lot more of the application, we've got the enemies and things like that loaded up. We'll load all of these images up in here. And when they're done, the initialization will be called, which is where we'll start the press space to, space to play and all that kind of stuff in there. All we need to do now then is cross our fingers and hope this all works okay. We need, of course, to call process asset from our document ready, starting with the index number zero. And as long as I haven't made any grand errors, everything should work. And in fact, I've just refreshed and you can see in the console that the assets are done. And in my assets, I've got the key player ship one blue. And inside that key, I've got an object with the file name, the height, and the width, the 37 and the 49. Because later on in the application, when we write the proper code for the game, we won't be specifying hard-coded uh, sprites like this with this width and this height. We'll be using the details that are inside our assets ob object here dynamically in the code to get the height and the width for every image that we need to load. So it's not much change visually on the application, but it's a bit of pre preparation for later on because we're going to start getting into uh, getting our sprite on there properly with a class and things like that. Okay then, so that's it for this video. It was relatively complicated, I would say, compared with the others so far, but hopefully it all makes sense. Um, we're making nice progress now. We've got our player on the screen. We can load assets. We can detect keys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment, as always. Question. I'll try to hope. Uh, help. Hope or help. And uh, otherwise, uh, see you in the next one.